and good afternoon. My name is Amanda and welcome to The Done Creative. Before we get into this pick a card reading, I just wanted to let you guys know I have a live stream channel and a writing slash vlog channel. And if you are interested in booking a personal reading with me, you can always email me at amanda at donephotodesign.com. Links for all of that can be found in the description below. But for this pick a card reading, I just ask that you close your eyes, take a couple of deep cleansing breaths to center your energy and focus in on pile number one with the Udia light, pile number two with the Malachite, and pile number three with the Spirit Quartz. Once you've selected your pile or piles, you can go ahead and check the description box below for the timestamps, and I also pin them as the top comment. And please remember, these are general readings, so only take the information that resonates with you and your life, and just go ahead and leave the rest behind. So without delaying this any further, I'm gonna give you a moment to meditate on your cards, and I will see you over at your reading. All right, group number one, or those of you who selected the Udia light, this is going to be your message. I'm not sure where we're gonna put this, maybe here. All right, so that should give us, maybe there. That should give us enough room um, to start. Before we get into the card and everything, we're gonna go ahead and roll the astro dice and put them up here and just see kind of the theme of your guidance here. If it doesn't resonate as the exact theme, you can take this information that comes through and apply it where it does apply in your life. This is just maybe kind of a guidance for you. And if you do hear my dog barking, I do apologize. He has very high anxiety and we've been having some health issues with him and he will spend hours upon hours upon hours every day just barking at nothing. And we can sit with him, he'll bark. We can go out of the room, he'll bark. So. Uh, I just kind of have to work my work schedule around when he decides to take a nap or eat or something like that. And um, he's not doing any of that right now and he's just wanting to bark. So my apologies, I just wanted to get this video out to you. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna go ahead and roll the Astro Dice first. We have Taurus in the third house with the South node. Very interesting. So if you yourself have your south node or your K2 in the third house in the sign of Taurus, then this is going to be ding, 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 we have a winner. But you don't necessarily have to have this placement for this to still resonate. This is just letting you know that you guys are really solidifying something from your past or overcoming something from your past, possibly having to do with your younger siblings. This could have to do with communication. And with the sign of Taurus, this is a stable, this is a secure, sometimes stubborn. I have my sun and Mercury in Taurus in Western astrology and my Mercury in Vedic astrology. So I know a thing or two about being stubborn when I have my mind set on something. So some of you might be just knowing, like it's a very clear cognizant kind of energy, just knowing what is right for you and stepping away from the things that are just no longer right for you. And for some of you, that is overcoming some lack mentality because with the sign of Taurus, that is a sign of luxury. And in the third house, that can indicate kind of shorter distance travel, that can indicate social media, communication, um, crafting things, your sense of courage, kundalini awakening is also found in the third house. So all of these themes may be coming up, but let's see what we have also with the cards. We have, to start you out, the Rose of Venus. This is all about alignment and flow and being in the right kind of relationships, be it your significant other, your friendships, your family dynamics, and this is a sense of harmony. And when the sign of, and it's very, I was gonna say sign, uh, when the planet Venus, which rules the sign of Taurus, when the sign of Venus, sorry, planet of Venus is involved, this is the height of luxury and authenticity and beauty. And this can be a sign of billionaires as well. Jupiter really is the planet associated with wealth, but if you want to know like mega wealth, you want to see where the Venus is. So this is all about you guys getting into alignment, specifically with your throat chakra, your heart chakra, your um, root chakra I'm seeing as well, and knowing what's right for you and cutting out anything, any toxic habits, thought patterns, relationships. Uh, situations in your life that just you know they're not for your highest good doesn't mean you can't revisit these things or these people relationship situations but for now you're taking a step back you're taking a respite or a vacation or a break some of you may literally be going on vacation or doing some sort of staycation to kind of reset your energy but let's see what other guidance spirit has for you group number one anything else that needs to come through for group one please spirit 
Ooh, we have the Hierophant. Yes, you're taking back your power. And you're wanting to do things a more traditional way. Even if you guys are my rebels and you want to do things non-traditionally, there's something you're doing or implementing very soon that you're, you're taking very traditional steps or a very traditional approach to the way you're doing it. Could even be a contract you're signing for a loan, to buy a house, to buy a car, um, paying off debt quite possibly. I'm seeing with that Hierophant as well. Um, yeah, like I was saying, there's this need to take a bit of a staycation or a break or a vacation because I think you guys have really stretched yourself thin or worn yourself thin. Even if you don't feel like you've been doing much, you guys just may have been recently kind of low energy, but this is all by design. This is for you to step back and just take some time for yourself um, to do something you enjoy or to just do nothing. That is completely valid as well. And the Four of Swords is a card of healing. So some of you may have been recently or very soon will be healing um, your relationships with younger siblings specifically, but siblings in general. Um, the 11th house usually rules over uh, elder siblings when we are talking Vedic astrology, but third house is younger siblings or just quote unquote siblings in general. But you guys are revisiting um, like an old cycle and you're closing it out once and for all this time. So let's see what other messages are coming through. Group number one, I need guidance from spirit. Okay, this one and this one. All right, so we have grief and passion, and this makes a lot of sense with overcoming some heartbreak because the three of swords comes before the four of swords, and that is a card of grief and heartbreak and um, you guys are healing from that right now. And one of the best ways you can heal from grief is to really lean into it and feed your passions with that grief, you know, create something. Um, a lot of the best creative works were inspired at a time someone was grieving. I know me, myself, the book series that I'm writing was heavily inspired by, you know, all the different losses I've had in my life. And just me kind of healing and working through those losses has been, you know, the product of this series that I'm writing. And you know, a lot of times in this dualistic realm that we live in, we can't appreciate and um, have this sense of passion and purpose without knowing those rock bottoms, those griefs, those heartaches, those heartbreaks. Um, so some of you may have recently also ended a relationship, are now coming into alignment with a divine counterpart or someone who's more on your level and is really sparking that passion once again with this kind of Ace of Wands energy I'm picking up from the passion card here, but also tying this passion card to the third house and the grief to the third house that we have in your Astro Dice here. There may have been a loss of one hobby or income stream or it's just not going where you thought it was. But you closing that old cycle out is actually bringing forth, you know, it's very eighth house or um, death and rebirth kind of energy with, you know, the death of one thing, it kind of acts as the fertilizer for something new to grow from, you know, those ashes or from that dirt. So you guys are basically planting the seeds for something new as well. So let's just see any other guidance or wisdom from spirit at this time for group number one. You get two, apparently, and I'm going to read these as I drop half the deck on the floor. Um, wow. So I see here with the snow quartz, this is about white light, and then the petrosite, petrosite, I never say that the correct way, and determination. So I'm going to read both of these for you. So petrosite helps remove stagnant energies. Yes, that's what we're doing. And a lot of times, if we keep operating these stagnant energies, we can keep putting forth effort and effort and effort. But things just aren't going well. Um, think of it like a glass of water. You put a bunch of dirt in there and you're expecting it to be clean and clear, but you just keep, the more work and effort you do, you just keep stirring that dirt in and in and in. It just can, creates this kind of murky or muddy looking water. But if you can actually work to remove the dirt from this, you know, more clean water, as you work at that, heal those things or, you know, remove the toxic traits and the toxic habits and the things that just are no longer serving you, you're going to get that clarity that you seek. But it says, helps remove stagnant energies, habits, and patterns from your life. 
and encourages you to take action toward your dreams. It gives you the determination to follow and stay on your path by releasing hesitation, uncertainty, and self-doubt. And there's an affirmation here, which you can write down and repeat to yourself, or you can just hear it once, whatever you want to do. Um, but it says here, I am determined to stay on my path. I will let nothing deter me from reaching my goal. And then the snow quartz, the white light energy here, it says the white color of snow quartz represents purification, cleanliness, and innocence. It helps you surround yourself with white light, bringing spiritual protection and connection to your angels and spirit guides. Carrying snow quartz is like having a snow angel in your pocket. How cute. Um, and then the affirmation here is, I surround myself with the white light of protection. Only good energy is allowed in and around my space. Um, and with that as well, there might be this sense of decluttering or wanting to get rid of um, I'm seeing like, um, like, what is it? Like, it's like an, um, electromagnetic fog or like EMFs, like the energy that electronics give off is really affecting your energy field. So maybe unplugging certain appliances or electronics when you're not using them can really cut down on those, um, EMF frequencies that are bombarding you, especially at night. Some of you might be having trouble falling asleep because maybe your phone is right next to your bed that can keep you up. Um, and just having other electronics that are plugged in near where you're resting. If you have a smart meter on your house or your apartment and it's right outside where you sleep or where you hang out a majority of your time when you're at home, that can really affect your health and your moods and your energy levels as well. So those messages are coming through maybe kind of specific to just a few of you, but if it resonates, feel free to take it. Okay. What else is coming through? Guidance for group number one, please, spirit. All right, here we go. And we have practice gratitude with the last quarter moon in Sagittarius. It's very interesting because I have my south node in the third house in Sagittarius myself. <laughs> very cool. And then we have the full moon in Cancer. Let your fears dissolve. Look at that. You guys are facing your fears by practicing some gratitude. And some of your fears may be related to past griefs or, or things you're already grieving the loss of that haven't even happened yet. And again, going back to my own personal life with Walter, we had a pretty big health scare with him this last week. He's got these tumors on his, like he's got tumors everywhere, but um, they're, they're fatty tumors, they're not cancerous, but um, they're so large, they are really affecting him being able to walk. And there's even two on his back that are pressing into his spinal cord and it made it impossible for him to walk the other day. And we were really scared. Um, so maybe you guys are looking into the future, like the, the loss, like we thought late earlier this week, we would have to put him down because he couldn't walk and there's no quality of life if he can't walk. But we figured out what the problem was and he's on some um, anti-inflammatory stuff to help um, ease all of that inflammation and get some pressure off of his spinal cord with that. But, you know, I, I went through like this process of, okay, I got to prepare myself. I got to let go. And it's just been a roller coaster ride just for me personally. So maybe you are experiencing something that you know, I mean, I know Walter's not going to live another three or four years. He's almost, he'll be 15 this year. So, I mean, I know, you know, we're on his last weeks, months, or years, <laughs> probably closer to months. Um, of his life, but I shouldn't keep thinking that. I should just be in the moment and appreciating every moment I do get. And maybe you guys can apply that to whatever situation you have going on as well. So, um, gratitude, just being thankful or grateful for what you do have. And one of the best ways you can practice gratitude is to get really present in the moment, get out in nature, move your body. These are all like walking meditation. Like that's one of the best things you can do is just get out in nature and walk and just, you know, share your gratitude with mother earth and your guides and just really vibe and connect in that way. So that is all I'm seeing for you, group number one. I hope this message resonated for you. Please feel free to share below any stories or comment if you are excited about this guidance that came through for you today. And I just wanted to say thanks again so much for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and those of you who have been hitting that thanks button down there and donating to the channel, that means the world to me. And those that don't want to use that, I also have my PayPal linked below for donations and they're never ever expected, but very highly appreciated. They are really the only thing that is keeping my channel going at this point. So thank you so much for that. And I hope to see you back here at the Den Creative. All right, bye. 
All right, group number two, or those of you who selected this beautiful malachite, this is going to be your message of guidance. And my apologies if my fan is loud. I had to turn it on because it was getting very warm in here. And if you do hear my dog barking, I do apologize. He has very high anxiety and we've been having some health issues with him and he will spend hours upon hours upon hours every day just barking at nothing. And we can sit with him, he'll bark. We can go out of the room, he'll bark. So. Uh, I just kind of have to work my work schedule around when he decides to take a nap or eat or something like that. And um, he's not doing any of that right now and he's just wanting to bark. So my apologies, I just wanted to get this video out to you. So let's go ahead and get into it. And there the dog goes again. Okay, so before we get into your reading, we're gonna go ahead and roll the Astro Dice just to see what comes through. This can be the theme of the guidance coming through, but if these um, little bits of piece and pieces don't resonate. You can just apply this guidance to whatever area of life resonates even more for you. What we have here, we have the sign of Aries in the fourth house with Saturn. So if you have Saturn in the fourth house in the sign of Aries, then this can just be absolute confirmation that you have selected the right pile. You do not have to have this placement whatsoever for this message to still be yours or to resonate for you. But what I'm gathering with this is you guys are really doubling down on things around your home. This could be looking for a new home, wanting to make a purchase with real estate. This could look like decluttering. This could be remodeling or just wanting to feel more inspired and passionate in the space that you're in because Aries is a very inspired and take action uh, kind of sign that wants to start something new, start something fresh. So maybe even some of you are working from home on a long-term project that is going to eventually bring you some income or some money. And this also could look like at this point or at this time, a bit of a challenge that you're going through with your mother, with your relationship with your mother, or those of you whose mothers have passed on, you are just wanting to connect with this mother more. Those of you who still have your mother here, um, there may even have been some health issues with your mom. Um, I don't see anything like too crazy, but um, that's just coming through. So let's see what else we have going on with this card. We have the sacred waters, nourishment, replenishment, health, rest, and self-care. So the guidance coming through, um, specifically when you are at home, you are, yes, you have Saturn here, which is kind of that taskmaster, like, let's just get the work done. Um, but this is basically asking you guys to balance all that work, work, work that Saturn will bring you to do. And it's going to be difficult because you're going to want to tackle that closet that's cluttered. You're going to want to remodel the flooring or, uh, you know, the house and replace the flooring or whatever it is. Um, but Saturn also delays things or, you know, makes it that you have to really work at something for it to finally come to fruition. Um, so you may, I'm, I'm seeing someone with a chronic condition or chronic illness, or maybe you're just having more days where you're, you're feeling tired, lethargic, or having some pain. Um, but this is about finding that balance to really give yourself self care. And, and this, this like chronic like condition that some of you may have, if you don't have a chronic condition, you do not have to claim, okay, I'll take on a chronic condition. No, no, no. Um, this is for those that have a chronic condition. So if you don't, you can kind of just wait about two seconds and we'll get to the rest of the message. But um, this chronic condition is actually acting at this time as a gift for you to actually take it easy or slow down because you do need some more rest and and if you can take this time to really take care of yourself and your health and replenish yourself nourish yourself in the best ways possible this chronic condition or illness will start to dissipate or kind of go on by the wayside I don't think it's gonna disappear for I mean if it's chronic it's chronic right um, but you're gonna find better ways to manage the pain or the you know just living with this condition and you're gonna know that when things flare up or you're not feeling your best, that is the time, that is the kind of cue from your own body to step back, nourish yourself, replenish yourself, take care of your health, rest, and do that self-care. Whatever self-care looks like to you because it's gonna differ for each of you. Okay, what else do we have going on? Messages of guidance for group number two, please spirit. And those of you, like I was saying, those of you who don't have a chronic condition, you do not have to claim it, but you just may, here in the next few days to weeks, might be having a lot of issues with just feeling on top of your game and just kind of feeling off a little bit. So fix that a little bit there. Okay. So let's try that again with the tarot. Any other words of wisdom, guidance for group two? 
So we have the Queen of Wands and the Three of Swords. Okay, so we did talk about the Three of Swords energy in group number two. You guys may be working through some sort of heartache or heartbreak. I see someone who's watching this actually did recently lose their mother um, within the last three years, but uh, I'm seeing someone who lost their mother maybe even in the month of May or April, quite possibly, of this year at the time of my filming this, 2022. But if you lost your mother later, like longer back than that, um, this can still apply to you. But this loss of your mother has really kind of forced you in a way to face um, your innermost like mortality, like I'm facing my own mortality. And also get back in touch with your inspiration and your passion for life. Those of you who did not lose your mother, there might have been just some heartbreaking energy um, it could be even as simple as feeling stuck in the home that you're in, uh, going back to fourth house. Um, fourth house also does rule over like vehicles, so maybe there was a recent car accident or, um, I don't know, with all the doom and gloom coming through for you guys, it's not like I see this on your horizon or your future at all. That is not coming through at all. This to me all feels like past energy, that if it resonates, it resonates. If it doesn't, you do not claim this as your future. So let's just put that out there. Um, but th this is a time coming up for you of just reinvigorated or rejuvenated passion, inspiration, creativity, um, wanting to nurture, you know, your own home, your own garden, your own life. So those of you who like maybe self-employed or maybe you do work a lot of hours, you're not maybe stepping away from what you're doing, but you're kind of dialing back the amount of availability you're giving to other people constantly and taking some of that time, energy, and effort and, a put, and putting that into your own self-development, your own you know, health, your own happiness, your own just taking a break and not pushing yourself so much and diving back into hobbies that you let go of because, oh, I just don't have time. You're making the time. That's what this Queen of Wands is saying here is you're done allowing those calendar pages to flip without you feeling happy or joyful. You're ready to claim back your power or take your power back from someone or something that has um, perceivably taken it from you. Okay, what else do we have going on? Messages of guidance for group two from Spirit at this time. And we have here Fancy Jasper with self-worth. Yes, I love this, I love this. So Fancy Jasper comes in a beautiful blend of colors, green for the heart chakra, sim stimulating self-love, and the warm colors of the lower chakra for self-empowerment. Fancy Jasper helps you release feelings of inadequacy and lack of self-worth. It restores a sense of self-respect by quieting the critical voice. Fancy Jasper helps you value the beautiful, special person that you are. And flaws and all. I'm hearing you are accepting your flaws and all with this. And then the little uh, affirmation here, I told group one they could write this down and repeat it as often as you want, or you can just hear it this one time, it's up to you. But this affirmation says, I embrace my individuality and honor my worth. And that, if anything I've ever heard, is the embodiment of the Queen of Wands. So beautiful. Bravo. Basically double Queen of Wands message right here, and I love that. Okay, what else do we have coming in? Guidance for group two, please, spirit. So we have joy. Yes, this is what we're talking about. Tapping back into that joy, bringing, you know, allowing time to just be in joy. But also we have the service card. So some of you might find joy by being of service to others, and that's why you do it so much. But you need to, again, going back to pulling your energy back a little bit to balance out all of the energy you're putting out to other people and places and things and keep some of that for yourself. You shouldn't have to, you know, drain your cup at the end of every day and then wake up and expect yourself to be completely replenished and able to do it again. We really do need to find that balance. And that's really one of the main messages here is finding the balance between, um, releasing, you know, the need to help everybody, you know, there's kind of a codependent energy here or a martyr energy with this combination here, there, there's this kind of martyr energy that you guys are putting in your past or you're, you're closing out that cycle. Um, and a lot of times uh, when Saturn present, that has to do with an old karmic cycle. Saturn is that planet of karma. And this might be on your maternal line. And we were talking about that mother energy, the fourth house. 
And if it wasn't the mother that recently passed, it might have been a grandmother energy, depending what resonates for you. Um, and maybe some of you actually did caretake for a mother who's passed or a grandmother who's passed, or you did a lot for this motherly energy that passed away. Um, and again, this is past energy, so this isn't like your grandmother or your mother's gonna pass away like in the near future. I don't see that for you guys. This is past energy we're picking up on. Um, but just wishing that you could have done more or been there more often for some of you. Maybe there is a little bit of guilt associated with that. And it was heartbreaking to lose this person because maybe you didn't get a proper goodbye. Um, but this person's coming through to let me know. Um, this motherly or grandmotherly energy is coming through to let me know for you guys. You can have your goodbye right now. And it doesn't have to be a goodbye. It can be a see you later. And you can tell this mother or grandmother anything right this second. You can pause this video and have a full-on conversation. And this person will get the, the message. They will get the memo. They will know exactly how you feel and what you want them to know. So feel free to do that if that calls to you at all. All right. What other messages of guidance are coming through? But yeah, you guys really do find a lot of joy in being of service to others. But it's finding that line or being able to balance very Libra energy, um, you know, mixed with Aries. Like you guys just want to be out there, those go-getters. But at the same time, you want to pull back and um, do things, you know, that are more quiet. And then at the same time, Aries is all about the self and Libra is all about wanting to help other people or, you know, be involved with other people. So I'm seeing like maybe your, your Libra and Aries axis, wherever that falls in your chart, is activated right now or maybe you have a stellium there or um, there's just something going on in, in that axis or whatever houses Libra and Aries rule in your chart. Um, this is a very important place. For me, it's literally Libra rules my first house and Aries rules my seventh. So this is a, a balance between me and other people or me and more specifically my husband. Okay, so let's find out any other messages of guidance for group number two. Okay, so we have here, we have the first quarter moon in Taurus release control. So releasing control, Taurus energy. A lot of times, um, you know, me as a Western Taurus sun and Mercury and a Vedic Taurus Mercury, <laughs> um, I don't want to release control of a lot of how I operate. Um, that's why I like being self-employed. I like to do things my way. But it's very interesting. You've got Aries and Taurus. So it's like the natural first house and the natural second house. So there might be um, ways you're releasing control about your finances to really help your personality or releasing parts of your personality that aren't fitting you anymore to bring in more abundance. There could be a first and second house um, relation going on in your chart there as well. And then we have the first quarter moon in Gemini, speak your world into being, and that's third house energy. That's very beautiful and very powerful um, that not only are you activating this more nourishing and healthy and replenished version of yourself, but it's more authentic as well. So if you guys did feel a little bit called toward group one, there may be some messages in there for you because I'm seeing some underlying themes at the very least between you guys. It's very interesting, but this is about releasing control. This doesn't mean you allow others to control you, but maybe there's just certain things in your life that are out of your control and you can fight against them and try to reclaim control, or there's this sense of surrender and not that kind of fatalistic surrender where you're just a victim and you give up and you know, what was me? No, this is surrendering to what is, and then what are you going to do about it? Like, where, how are you going to move forward knowing what you know, with the resources you have, and the energy, and the, you know, maybe for some of you, this is going to redirect you to a new job, a new relationship, a new circumstance to get you out of something that just felt toxic or like cycle, like very karmic. You guys are getting yourself out of it. And one of the best ways you can do that is speaking it into being, setting intentions. I intend that my next job is going to provide for me and bring me joy. I'm going to feel like I have purpose and I am of service and, you know, saying more what you want rather than what you don't want. Cause we could say something like, Oh, my next job, the, the coworkers aren't going to be toxic. Instead of that, you say, I'm going to enjoy working with my very faithful and loyal coworkers. You know, you want to word these things in a positive light because 
um, we're, we're focusing on what we want rather than what we don't want. And that is your message of guidance, group number two. I hope this resonated for you. Please feel free to let me know below any stories you want to share. I always, always love to hear from you guys in the comments. And I want to say a very special thank you to those who have been hitting that little thanks button, the heart with the dollar sign in the middle right below the video here. Um, that has basically been what's been keeping my channel afloat these past few months. Um, I get a few dollars here or there in donations and that, I, I can't tell you guys how much I really do appreciate that. Um, it means the world to me and those of you who don't want to donate through that, you can always also send a donation through PayPal if you feel so inclined. It is never ever expected but always appreciated and I just wanted to say thanks again so much to all those, for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, and all the things and I really truly do hope to see you group two right here back at the Done Creative. Alright, bye! All right, group number three, or those of you who selected the spirit quartz, so beautiful. This is going to be your message of guidance. And to get us started, before we even get into the card, we're going to go ahead and roll the astro dice to get a really clear message of the theme of this guidance. If this exact guidance doesn't resonate with, you know, what house and all of that, um, you can apply this guidance to whatever area of life. You don't have to feel tied to the astro dice. So, take this reading as it resonates for you and if you do hear my dog barking i do apologize he has very high anxiety and we've been having some health issues with him and he will spend hours upon hours upon hours every day just barking at nothing and we can sit with him he'll bark we can go out of the room he'll bark so uh, I just kind of have to work my work schedule around when he decides to take a nap or eat or something like that and um, he's not doing any of that right now and he's just wanting to bark so my apologies I just wanted to get this video out to you so let's go ahead and roll these astro dice to get kind of the theme again you don't have to be locked into this theme for your guidance you can apply this guidance however you see fit um, but we have here the first house the Sun and Sagittarius so some of you, if you have Sagittarius in the first house and you have the sun there, the sun in Sagittarius in the first house, then this is just maybe extra clarification or verification that you have selected the right pile. But you do not have to have this placement for this to still resonate. The sun really is about our passion and our purpose in life. The first house is all about us, our personality, our body, and Sagittarius rules long distance travel. It's about luck and spirituality and higher learning. So some of you may be thinking about taking some sort of course or um, going back to school or going to school for the first time for some of you or just wanting to learn. This is a very learning um, specifically about yourself. So maybe you're diving into your own birth chart, your human design, your personality type. You guys are wanting to know all the things about you, about your soul, you know, soul, sun, S-O-L and S-O-U-L, sun. That is the Atmakarka or the soul of the chart in Vedic astrology is the sun. So this is about discovering your purpose, your passion, specifically when we pair the sun and Sagittarius. And the first house, this is about discovering your purpose, your, you know, just passion for life and the potential that is within you. And speaking of potential, we have the bud card as well. Potential, promise, it's about to happen. Keep going. And, you know, Sagittarius does rule the natural ninth house, which is all about long distance travel. So some of you may have been waiting a very long time to go on a trip overseas or a trip that's long distance and by long distance I mean maybe over 500 miles from where you normally live maybe even a thousand or more miles from where you live you guys are ready to put yourselves out there maybe even online I'm getting like third house vibes as well or like mass media communication social media quite possibly you have a message you have a purpose that you want to put out um and, there, and some of you that are watching this, your message is going to be very, very well received. It just might take a bit of time to get that message out there or to, you know, the right algorithm or the right audience to come along. But when you do, it's you're going to blow up in such a big way. And whatever that looks like to you, it may not be, you know, 3 million followers. It might be, you know, 300 followers or 3,000, depending on your scale of what, what do you determine as blowing up. Right, um, so let's go ahead and get some additional guidance. But yeah, you guys, things are about to happen. So those of you who have been going through some really challenging times lately, 
just know that that cycle is about to close. And that's kind of been an underlying theme for all three piles so far. But let's just see any additional guidance specific to group three, please, Spirit. Anything they need to know at this time. Ooh, those top two right there. So excited. What do we got? What do we got? King of Swords and the Magician. Wow. You guys really are about to take your communication to the streets and you're owning, you're owning your potential, you're owning your power because this is, you know, the magician at the heart of it is about you tuning into your higher aspect, your, your soul, your higher self to be able to accomplish everything that you set out to accomplish before you incarnated, you know, your soul contracts or, um, you know, what it is you wanted to experience in this life. And the magician comes in with all of the tools they need, the sword, the cup, the pentacle, and the wand. And it's up to you as the person or the human aspect to take the action and do the thing to make the thing happen. And I think you guys have been making things happen and having wins along the way, but there's something that you guys have been working toward or working on that you are ready to just expand your horizons. Very Jupiter energy as well. Um, and Jupiter does rule the sign of Sagittarius. So wherever your Jupiter is in your chart, wherever the sun is in your chart, whatever houses those are in, and also wherever the sign of Sagittarius is in your chart are gonna be very important places where your purpose is really igniting. And also whatever's going on in your first house or your ascendant, major changes going, maybe even to your physical, like your physicality, your body, maybe you are, um, you know, shifting uh, like weight or um, getting toned. I see someone's really working on their physical vessel. Um, just wanting to fit better in clothes. I don't see that specifically you guys are looking to quote unquote lose weight, but you just wanna feel better in your body and you wanna like have your clothes fit better. I'm really seeing that message come through for um, a handful of you. Um, also maybe even wanting to cut your hair a little shorter or uh, try something different with your hair, try something different with your wardrobe. And I've seen so I just heard the word capsule wardrobe. So maybe someone is looking to create like a capsule wardrobe. If you have no idea what that is, maybe this is just the message to go look up what that is. And that can really help you um, find better things to wear and find better ways to pair what you already have with things you already have. So you don't have to go buy a whole new wardrobe. Um, yeah, that, that might just be specific to one person. But those of you who know what capsule wardrobes are and have a capsule wardrobe or you're just now learning um feel free to take that information and run okay what else do we have going on but this really is this feels to me like you speaking your truth speaking from the heart even the king of swords he's he's not um like he's he's not gonna mince words he's gonna let you know exactly how he feels and i think many of you through a lot of your life have you know, kind of held back what you wanted to say or, you know, just agreed with other people just so you wouldn't have any conflict or confrontation. But you guys are kind of stepping out of that more meek and wallflower kind of energy and you're expanding. You are saying what you feel and you're gonna learn that a lot of people actually wanna hear what you have to say. Even if you don't feel that they're on board, you're gonna find that a lot more people are listening or excited to hear what you have to say coming up. Okay, what other messages of guidance do we have for group number three, please, Spirit? And we have trust with the blue barrel. So beautiful. Blue barrels, calming water-like color, reminds you to trust the natural flow of things. If you are working too hard to make something happen, you are not seeing the result. Blue barrel helps you surrender the control. It assures you that the universe has heard your request and is orchestrating the perfect outcome in divine timing. You just need to let go and trust. And then the affirmation, you can say this repeated over and over, you can write it down, or you can just hear it this one time and be done with it, whatever you choose to do. But it says here, I trust that the universe can deliver what I want better than I can imagine. Wow. And there, may, there are some major ties between you and group two. I'm not saying all of you should resonate with group two, but there is an underlying theme or energy with group two that you guys might resonate with. Um, those of you who were kind of torn between groups two and three, or those of you who are coming in from group two, hello, hello. Um, obviously, you guys are already tied to group two. So yeah, this is all about learning to trust and knowing that things are going to happen even better than you could have imagined. And just setting the intention, because it, our intentions really are everything. Because we can make a meal and then eat it, um, or 
we can make, we can, you know, prepare that meal and be infusing it with love and knowing that this food is going to nourish our body. And then we eat that food and it, it's just an elevated experience. So it's like you guys are elevating each of your experiences by setting intentions for what you, you know, intentions and expectations are similar yet different. Because when we expect something, if it doesn't happen, usually we're disappointed. But when we set an intention and it doesn't quite hit the mark, um, that sense of disappointment really isn't there as much because we're coming from a more detached place. And I know a lot of times you hear the word detachment, you're like, oh, you don't care about anything anymore. You're detached. You don't care. Um, quite the opposite. Um, you just, the out, you, you're kind of like happy with it is what it is. And you know that whatever is meant for you, nothing could take it away. Um, but of course, at the same time, you have to work toward those goals or make effort toward what it is you're wanting to create because you know the magician has all these tools but if the magician doesn't pick up these tools and work or you know shape things or create things nothing's going to happen those tools are just going to collect dust and that is that um so this is about you trusting that you have the tools you already need to create the life you want even if it's not quite reflected on the external the way you want it to by starting to work from within and then start taking steps you know in the material world or the outer world you're going to start really shaping your life into what you wanted it to be from for a long time for some of you all right what other guidance is coming in for group two please sorry group three group three please spirit and this one okay so we have faith yes faith and trust are similar similar energies um but this is resonating with the crown chakra and we have quest wow this is so beautiful and the magician card always reminds me of like you know hero's journey like hero energy as well so you guys may not be on a quest to just enhance your life or expand your life or expand your horizons or have new experiences you know like we were talking about with the travel maybe you're wanting to get out there more and see the world or experience things or learn new things specifically learn things that will really help improve or um enhance your life in some way Maybe wanting to learn more about, again, going back to like human design or your birth chart, just wanting to learn about who you are on a personality level and even deeper on a more soul level as well. But having faith that anything that is meant for you, you've, you've got access to it. And we have a cup here or a chalice here in this person's hand. We've also got one here on the magician. So maybe for some of you, you're looking for a new connection um, with a soulmate. This could look like a romantic soulmate um, or someone who's like an acquaintance that becomes like a fast friend because you have had other lifetimes together. This is like soulmate energy. Could be someone that's already in your life. Um, but for others of you, this could be a child you're bringing through or a child that someone in your family is bringing through or um, someone that you know, there's a new child coming in. Um, this also could be the birth of like a creative project or... Um, just something you're wanting to manifest or create in your life because you know manifestation vibes with that magician card there Okay, what other messages of guidance do we have for group number three, please spirit? All right So we have here let your fears dissolve with the full moon in cancer We got this in another pile. It's been a minute. That might have been group one <laughs> Uh, but maybe it was group two. I can't quite remember. Uh, when I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. So full moon in cancer, let your fears dissolve. Some of you may have had fears of, you know, speaking the, that truth. Like I said, you know, just go along to get along. You're not gonna rock the boat or creating confrontation by speaking your truth if it opposes someone else. Um, but you're allowing um, those fears about your throat shock or, or being able to express yourself um, and express your creativity. You're allowing these fears to dissolve. And then we also have the new moon in Virgo. Trust that all will be well. So you have a double message of trust with the blue barrel trust. And then here with the new moon in Virgo, trust that all will be well. This is your guidance is to trust. Have faith in yourself first and foremost, in your guides and the universe to have your back. But this isn't you just sitting around waiting for a savior. Oh no. When you have this combination, the king of swords and the magician, you are taking life by the reins and guiding it, setting those intentions and going in the direction of those intentions, taking action day by day toward those intentions. That is how you can really have that faith and trust that everything is working out on your quest for your dream life or your, um, your happily ever after, if there's even such a thing. Um, but just bringing you in a more 
aligned like timeline with what your soul set out to do on this planet. All right, group number three, that is all I'm seeing for you, but I hope this message resonated. Please feel free to let me know below any stories you want to share. I always, always love to read your comments, and thanks to those of you who have been sending the super thanks. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate that. That really is what is keeping this channel afloat at this time, that and your donations, and those of you are like, what's a super thanks? It's the little heart with the dollar sign in the middle of it right below this video. You can see it there in the lineup of share and save and all of that and that really is like i said keeping this channel afloat at this time with the low amount of views that i get so thank you so much and those that don't want to do the super thanks but still want to donate i also have a paypal linked below and it is never ever expected but always highly highly appreciated so thank you so much to those of you who have been doing that i oh I, words can't express how much i love you guys and appreciate you guys so much Thanks again so much for all those likes, comments, shares, subscribes, super thanks, donations, and all the things. And I really truly do hope to see you, Group 3, right here, back at the Den Creative. All right, bye!